Where do babies come from? We're going to investigate that question in this video as we explore the female reproductive system. Let's start by looking at the structures. Here we are zooming in on the female's anatomy. The female has two ovaries, one on either side of her pelvic region. These are adjacent to oviducts here and here. These also go by the name of fallopian tube. The fallopian tubes or oviducts lead into the uterus, which then narrows in a region called the cervix, which then widens into the vagina. Now let's take a look at these structures from the side. Here is the woman's front or anterior. Here is the woman's rear or posterior. The ovary is located towards the center uh, with the oviduct adjacent. And then here we have the uterus in between the bladder and the rectum. There's the cervix, here's the vagina, and you can see that the opening for the vagina is in between the anus and the urethra. So now that we know the structures, let's explore their functions. Starting with the ovary, where something very important happens, a process known as oogenesis. Oogenesis is simply the production of an egg cell. Now the fancy term for an egg cell is ovum. And an egg cell is produced within the ovary within sacs called follicles. So here we can see a small follicle uh, with an egg cell inside. And over time, that egg cell will develop. So this process is oogenesis. Now, once that egg cell is mature, uh, it will be released in a process known as ovulation. Ovulation is the release of that ovum or egg cell into the oviduct. And this will happen once a month as soon as a female hits puberty. One egg cell released every month for the most part. Another important thing that ovaries do is produce hormones. They're also part of the endocrine system. The ovaries specifically make estrogen and progesterone. Now, once that egg is released, it is swept into the oviduct. And the oviduct does a couple of important things. Uh, the first one is transport. Its job is to transport the ovum or egg from the ovary into the uterus. However, something important may happen along the way. In the oviduct, the sperm and the egg may fuse during the process of fertilization. If that occurs, the ovum is now a zygote, a single cell that has all the genetic information from the mother and the father. Now, as that zygote continues to move along the oviduct, it's going to divide. Here it's divided into two cells, and here it's divided into four, and so on. So by the time it reaches the uterus, it's now a little ball of cells, a multicellular embryo. And in the uterus, that embryo will implant. It will kind of dig into the wall and set up shop there. Here's a closer look at the oviduct. If you look closely, you'll see that there are cilia, or hairs, and they help the oviduct sweep the ovum along towards the uterus. So here we are in the uterus. An important structural feature of the uterus is that it has a thick uterine lining. Uh, it's muscular walls, and those walls are lined with blood vessels. And those are important because they will help support the baby during pregnancy. And in fact, uh, every month, a female's uterine lining will thicken just in case she does get pregnant. Uh, if she does get pregnant, then the embryo will implant in that thick uterine wall. If, however, she does not get pregnant, then the female will shed that thick uterine lining during menstruation. So that's actually what is being passed out of the female's body. Now, let's say that a female uh, does become pregnant. In the uterus, another important structure develops, and this is known as the placenta. The placenta is an organ made primarily of blood vessels. And those blood vessels are connected to the baby via the umbilical cord. So here's the uterus, here's the placenta, here's the baby's umbilical cord, uh, which wraps around. And the job of the placenta is to exchange materials between the baby and the mother. So for example, uh, the mother may take in uh, nutrients and oxygen for the baby. Those will move through the blood vessels of the placenta into the umbilical cord and then enter into the baby. 
Meanwhile, the baby is producing waste, so those wastes will pass through the umbilical cord into the placenta, into the mother's circulatory system, and then she'll dispose of the waste. Another structure that develops during pregnancy is the amniotic sac. Uh, this is within the uterus, and this is a sac full of fluid called amniotic fluid, and it helps cushion the fetus during development. And towards uh, the end of pregnancy, when a woman's water breaks, it's really the amniotic sac breaking and releasing the fluid. So lastly, during pregnancy, uh, during childbirth, the baby has to pass out through this narrow neck, the cervix, and during pregnancy that will dilate or widen to allow passage of the baby, and then out through the vagina. Of course, the vagina is also the entryway for sperm uh, en route to the egg. And then lastly, at the end of childbirth, uh, the placenta and the umbilical cord will pass out of the female's body. This is known as afterbirth. And that concludes our explanation of the female's reproductive system.